to understand the answer for this question first you should know what are all the elements or the parts present in the rotameter so let us discuss what are the parts present in the rotameter rotameter consists of a tapered metering tube like this which has the scale on this usually it is a glass material where the scale can be indicated and the scale will be marked like this inside this tube we are going to have a float of different different constructions but here if you look at this float above the float we are having a circular flat area and sometimes we will going to have like this sometimes we will going to have like this sometimes we will going to have a plane circle but different different kind of fluids we are going to use different different types in fact different different shapes of float now if you look at the picture clearly the liquid is entering at the inlet here and it is allowed to come out from this channel that's why i have mentioned like outlet throughout this explanation if i use the uh, f alone then it means that that is for float if i use fl means it is going to be for fluid if i say the fluid average velocity or mean velocity if i say that is equal to 0 0 meter per second what does it mean the fluid is static if the fluid is static then this particular float will going to rest exactly here that means the fluid uh, float will going to be almost at the end like this this is the location of the float if the average velocity of the fluid is equal to 0 then what will going to happen this will indicate exactly at 0 mm so this means that the velocity of the fluid is now identified by the scale reading that's why rotameter is called as a indicating type instrument number 1 number 2 is rotameter is always placed vertically such that the gravity component will be there now let me explain one by one question here suppose if the velocity of the fluid is not equal to 0 meter per second what does it mean the fluid velocity is increased for understanding purpose let me take this as a 10 meter per second that means the fluid is going with the velocity 10 meters per second now let us see what will going to happen if the velocity of the fluid is increased then this particular float will going to move in vertically upward direction by with rotation that means this float will going to rotate 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 and it will going to move in the upward direction for time being let us say after traveling it stopped exactly at this point if it indicates this height then this particular height will be calibrated or converted into velocity as the float is rotating in upward direction or in the downward direction this particular setup or the device is called as a rotameter so in rotameter float plays a very dominant role in fact the float is the one which will going to indicate the a velocity of the fluid in terms of height of the height on the scale clear now let us see what will going to happen when the fluid velocity is 10 meter per second so as i said this particular float will going to rotate and it will going to stop at one particular point where the equilibrium is achieved to understand the concept related to the equilibrium first one should know what are the forces acting on the float now let us take the float here and let us draw the free body diagram of this so that you will be understanding how we are getting the equilibrium force now let us see this float is nothing but this float here now if you carefully observe exactly below the float we are having some fluid here and this fluid will going to apply the pressure in upward direction let us say the pressure applied by the fluid which is below the float at equilibrium point let me consider that as a pd that is pressure from the bottom of the float and similarly here we are going to have the pressure offered by the fluid above the float so pa is the pressure offered by the fluid which is above the float and pb is the pressure that is acting on the float because of the fluid which is just present below the float now this pb will going to offer the pressure in upward direction let me write down here so the force acting because of this pressure on the float in upward direction will be written as fp so now if you look at this one pa pa will going to push the float in downward direction so that means pa will going to offer the force in downward direction let me take that as fp these are the two forces acting on this float because of the pressure of the fluid now let us look at the other dimension of the same thing as usually the weight of this float will come down let me say this is going to be weight here and buoyancy force will act in the upward direction because when the float is inside the liquid 
definitely the volume occupied by this float or the volume of the water that is displaced because of the float will going to offer the force in upward direction this particular force is called as a buoyancy force now let me say buoyancy force here as a capital b fb now let us look at what will going to happen as the float is initially here now it is moving in the upward direction as it is dragging in upward direction let me consider by default fb dominates fb right then these two forces are because of the pressure so what we can do is instead of writing fa here we can write this net force here as fb minus fa clear and these people used to call this fb minus fa as drag force that is nothing but fd so now fb is the buoyancy force and fd is the drag force and fw is the weight of the fluid now let us see what will going to happen at equilibrium at equilibrium means when the float is at rest naturally the sum of upward forces on the float should be equal to downward forces that means at equilibrium we can say drag force plus buoyancy force is equal to weight of the fluid now look at here drag force how much we have said that is fd plus buoyancy force can be written as fb is equal to weight of the fluid and this let me take from here so as drag force we know that this is going to be what fb minus fa let me write one more line here fb minus fa that means this is the net force because of the pressure acting on below the float as well as above the float and plus we can say fb buoyancy force is equal to weight of the float fb minus fa can be written as equals to fw minus fb now fb this force fb is nothing but the uh, pressure uh, force because of this pressure right so fb can be written as area of the float here on which this pressure is acting into pressure p right so because pressure is force per area so uh, force can be written as area of the float into pressure acting from the bottom minus this fa can be written as now af into pa right so this whole is equal to fw minus f now from here we can still rewrite this one as af into pb minus pa pb minus pa can be written as a differential pressure because now in this particular situation this will become upstream pressure and this will become downstream pressure and the difference between pb minus pa is called as differential pressure that will be equal to fw that is weight of the float how can i write weight of the float that is mass of the float f means float into gravitational force that's why to have this component weight component we must and should keep the rotometer in vertically upward direction minus fb fb is nothing but mass of the fluid which is displaced by the float that can be written as <coughs> density of the fluid fluid into volume of the float because this is the volume of the float and that much amount of volume of the liquid will be displaced float into gravity so rho fl into vf is actually nothing but the total mass of the fluid that is displaced because of the volume of the float this is buoyancy force now here this mass of the float can be now written as density of the float into volume of the float volume of the float now what we will going to get here differential pressure now can be given as that is equal to this time we can say vf we can take outside and g also we can take outside rho f minus rho fl that is density of the fluid by the area of the float the right? area of the float and i said differential pressure here we can clearly visualize the value of volume of the float is fixed gravitational force is fixed and the area of the float is fixed and then rho f density of the float is fixed and density of the fluid is fixed all these variables are fixed so what does it mean it means that delta p is going to be 
constant that means differential pressure is not varying here clear then what will going to vary that i will explain but like in the traditional flow meters which we studied earlier like arfis meter and venturi meter in a uh, flow nozzle obstruction is fixed when the obstruction is fixed then naturally the permanent pressure drop is will be there permanent pressure drop will be there because of the stagnation pressure but here the obstruction that is float is continuously moving that's why the pressure drop will be less but have you understood here what happens here if the fluid velocity is 10 now the float will going to stop here so that means the area seen by the fluid if i say now this is going to be the area seen by the fluid let us say this is a cone here now like this now this is the area seen by the fluid a cube minus a r now so through this the liquid will going to flow correct but suppose if we keep this instead of 10 if we keep this as 20 meter per second then the same float instead of standing here it will going to come and stand maybe here it will going to stand maybe here at this point right so what does it mean this means that now the liquid will going to see the net area this tapered tube area of cross section minus the float area of uh, float area of cross section that means earlier for 10 meter per second this is the area seen by the fluid but at 20 meter per second this is going to be the area seen by the liquid clear so that means when the velocity of the fluid is changing area seen by the fluid is changing effective area seen by the fluid is changing clear that's why rotometer is called as variable area type flow meter so that means the velocity at the end directly proportional to the area seen by the fluid here clear so this is about rotometer hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and if you want to find more of this kind of questions connect to my channel namaste